Oh no. <laughs> hey you guys, oh this is odd. Oh no, we're doing it this way, it won't let me do it this way. Why am I so technologically challenged? Okay, we're going to be in our little live stream today in this odd orientation. But maybe it's a blessing in disguise because then you can see what it is that I'm writing. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? Um, let me grab my cup of tea. I'm gonna just grab my cup of tea really quickly. Hello, you guys, are you there still? And can you hear me? Um, I'm really sorry, it's, it's like in this odd position today, but you know me, this is technologically challenged. <laughs> I'm working on it, I am working on it. Um, can you just let me know if you can hear me? Can somebody say, okay, thank you, Alexandru. All right, well, my lovely friends, cheers. We're going to be talking business today, oh my gosh. We are going to be in music teacher business mode. So in this video, I am going to show you my amazing strategy for keeping track <laughs> of music lessons. So what you need is you at least need something like this. And you can see that I have written the month. So I'm gonna have a different one of these every month. So it's January, 2023. And we've got our students, bashful, dark, dopey, sneezy, sleepy, grumpy, and happy. Do you recognize these names? <laughs> the seven dwarves. Hey, Marsha, cheers. So you need to write down your students' names and then you're going to take a look at your calendar and write down the expected number of lessons for each student. So let's do that. I'm going to say bashful. I'm going to expect four lessons from bashful. Doc, let's say two, because he's busy, right? He's a doctor. Um, so every other week for him, maybe. Dopey, mm, two. <laughs> he's a little bit unreliable, has other things going on. Sneezy, let's say four. Sleepy, four. Grumpy, definitely needs four lessons. And happy, definitely needs four lessons. All right, so. That's my expected number of lessons from them for the month. And then during the month or that first week, um, I'm going to see, because during the first week of the month is when I kind of um, like to know about unexpected lesson scheduling issues. So if I can figure out how to reschedule those, I can do that during the first week of the month, or I'll at least know during the first week of the month, unfortunately, like it would be nice to know the, the month before. And sometimes my, my students do tell me the month before, but sometimes it just happens the first uh, week of the month where I just suddenly, instead of having four lessons, we'll have three lessons or even two lessons from them. So let's say January, bashful, I'm expecting to have four lessons from him um, and I'm not gonna adjust him. And let's say he pays me uh, $25 a lesson. And so I now have four lessons from him. So I'm going to get $100 that month from Bashful. We're just making the math easy. So I'm going to just go with $25 a lesson. So Doc, I expect two lessons from him and he's very reliable. So I'm going to say two lessons. And um, so that would be 25 times two is 50. Dopey, I'm expecting two lessons a month from him. So let's go with two. Um, he's reliable this month, and so that's another 50. Sneezy, I'm expecting four, but he had something come up, so three lessons. So rather than $100 from Sneezy in January, I will get 75. So let's pop 75 down. And then Sleepy, let's say four lessons and still four, so let's go with 100. Grumpy, he had something come up, so rather than four lessons, let's say three lessons for him, so that's 75. And then happy, four lessons, let's go with four lessons, so that's 100. So <clears throat> I made a little bit less than expected, right? 
here's my expected lessons and these are my adjusted oh hello there thank you for being here this this afternoon um, so these are my adjusted lessons and then this is how much they paid for their lessons so i'm going to grab a calculator and we're going to tally that up and then we're going to do a little bit more math so just a moment where i find a calculator because my calculator has decided not to work so we're going to use my calculator on my computer so let's let's go ahead and see so we have a hundred plus whoops hold on a hundred plus 50 plus 50 plus 75 plus 100 plus 75 plus 100. So that means that I made $550 this month from my seven dwarves, <laughs> from the seven students. All right, so this is my total income. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out how much to put in my business checking account, business savings account, personal checking account, and personal savings account. Okay, so the first thing that one must do is save for taxes. So we're gonna take 50, sorry, we're gonna take $550 and we're gonna times it by 0.3 for taxes but we want to be extra responsible. So rather than just timesing it by three, we're going to times it by 0.35. That way there's a little extra money in there for me in my business checking account. That way I have money for taxes. I have a little buffer of money. When all my tax money comes out, it's not at zero. I still have a little bit of money in there or I have money for expenses, uh, business expenses. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take 550 times 0.35 times, let's see, hold on a second. I guess I have to delete all of this here. So 550 times 0.35 equals $192.50. So, I'm gonna take $192.50 and put that into my business savings account. Taxes, a little buffer for me, and business expenses. So now we're going to take $550 and minus it um, from $192.50 and see how much money is left. So we're gonna do $550 minus 192 and 50 cents and that leaves me with 357 dollars and 50 cents so 357 dollars and 50 cents that's my after tax income okay so now i have to put some money in my business checking account We've already put the 35% in my business savings account. I also need to put some money in my personal checking account. And I'm not talking today about investments or retirement or health insurance or dental insurance or any of that kind of thing. I'm just doing a very basic kind of idea for you so that you can know what's going on. So what we'll do is we're going to then save 10% of $357.50. So let's use the computer, even though it's probably quite easy to do this. So 357 times 0.1. Whoops, hold on a minute. I'm not used to this calculator. 357 times point 0.1 is $35.75. So that's 10% saving for me. So I'm going to put $35.75 in my personal checking account. 
So now what we'll do is we're going to see how much money is left over. So I'm gonna take 35.75 for my after-tax income. And we'll see how much money I now have to live on. <laughs> so $357.50 minus $35.75 for my personal savings. So that leaves me $321.75. Okay, so it's nice to have some extra money in your other accounts. You don't want to be at like zero all the time or at the bare minimum. And so before we decide that we have $321.75 to live on, we need to distribute some of that extra, that money into my other accounts. So first one is my personal checking account. So I'm gonna just save 5% of that. You could save more, but let's times it by 0 0.5. So $321.75 times 0 0.05 is $16. So $16 is gonna go in my personal checking account. And I'm gonna also put $16 in my business checking account. So that means 16 times two times two is 32. So now I'm gonna subtract $32 from 321 and 72 cents. 321, 75 minus, oh, this stupid calculator, sorry. 321.75 minus 32 is $289.75. So that's how much money I now have to live on. The first thing that we did was we got all of our students, we wrote their names down, we wrote down how many lessons we expected to have with them. During that first week of the month, there might have been some adjustments in the number of lessons you expected. And then we have the paid column. So this is what you were paid this month. We then um, took 35% of this income to save for taxes and business expenses and just having a buffer in our business savings account. And then we took 10% um, of that money that was left over to save for ourselves and our personal savings account. And then we took 5% of that money um, that was left over after taking 10% to save for our personal stuff. We took 5% of that to save in our personal checking account and our business savings account because we need a little buffer. So that means that we have this much money left over to live on. <laughs> and that should, if you kind of do that, that should kind of help you get set up. But as you can see, I started with $550 and now I'm living on $290, let's say, $290, $550 down to $290. And most of that money has actually gone to be saved for taxes. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, it's, it is, it, it's, it can be expensive and very difficult to be a music teacher. And especially um, during any holidays, um, were, you know, like summer vacations, things like that. If you teach a lot of children, um, the holidays for sure, things get a little bit tight. There's going to be, um, times where you're not really feeling well and you definitely don't get paid for being sick. Right. Um, so you fingers crossed that you can reschedule people. Um, if the student has any, you know, changes in their lives or financial issues, you're the very first thing to go. <laughs> so it's just like, and I, I'm not complaining. I'm not making this video at all to complain. This is just a reality for those of you out there that might be wanting to be music teachers um, or that are in college or things like that. It's just, 
Um, we, we haven't even talked about saving for health insurance or paying for health insurance or instrument insurance or rent or utilities or, you know, all the things that kind of go in with day-to-day um, -day life expenses. So your income can really fluctuate quite a bit. So keeping track of what you do monthly is really helpful. And then you can kind of estimate how much you'll make the next month. But don't, don't like count your eggs before you have them. <laughs> um, just kind of, you have a very rough idea of what, how much you'll make each month. And when you're a music teacher, it really does help to have like a, like lessons, policies rule. And if any of you out there are struggling to figure out like what, what should you have in your lesson policies on my website, on my registration and information page on my website, I have my lesson policies right there. They're my studio housekeeping rules. And so that might be of help to any of you that are working with people um, or teachers. Um, so my website is linked below in the description, probably it's violinviolamasterclass.com and you can, uh, just check and see. So let's see. Last year I charted my income month to month to visualize when high and low months occurred and it helped to budget. Yeah, it really, like the more that, like your first year being a music teacher or being a, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, it's a kind of uncertain because you're still kind of learning and it's taken me like many years to kind of get the hang of it because you're not taught this in school <laughs> you're not taught how to do this in school um and it just it just can be tricky so do any of you have any questions let's ha let's have a sip of tea and see if anyone has any questions or comments what do you think you guys i hope this was a helpful video <laughs> I feel like it might have been extremely boring, but, and probably you were already new to do this, but it just would have been a helpful video for me to have when I was first starting out. So, Alexandru says, I totally agree that statistics help. I use them for my monthly living expenses. Yeah, that's good. Well, any other questions you guys while I'm here? Oh my gosh, I have an announcement. <laughs> this Thursday, I think it's um, January 12th this Thursday. Is it the 12th? It's our, whatever the second Thursday is of January. I think it's January 12th. We have our very first um, guest artist class this of the year. And she's a viola professor from the University of Costa Rica. And she's a friend of mine. You're gonna love her. She's wonderful. So if you are interested in, in um, joining one of our guest artist classes, head over to Patreon, which is just patreon.com slash violin viola masterclass. And I have a tier so that you can join the guest artist classes each month. Um, I have a professor or um, a teacher come and work with us. Marcia says, very helpful. I started teaching at a Christian school. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, and there's just some, our next violin group class is going to be ne not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And then the last Friday of the month is our virtual studio circle. So we've got some fun little things that you can join this month if you'd like. All that info, like I said, is on Patreon or it's on my website too. So shall we call it a day? It was so nice to just come hang out. I'm sorry, <laughs> I meant to do this on Friday, but we had some issues um, with maintenance and it just took way longer than I expected. So I ended up making some ginger snap cookies for the maintenance crew and like nobody ate any of them. So my other half and I ate most of them and I'm feeling extremely fat today. <laughs> Anyways, well, you guys, thank you for being here tonight or not tonight, but this afternoon. Cheers. And um, if you have any questions or requests for videos in the future, Zofer says, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for being here. Just comment below. Let me know what your questions might be. And I'll see you all very soon. Possibly see you on Thursday if you come to the guest artist class. All right, you guys. Bye. Lots of love. <laughs>